Hey, what's up, Auburn Nation? It's Jim Bobbington, and we are going to finally start on the installation of the new analog tachometer. Uh, I put out a uh, video uh, a little bit earlier to show you kind of everything that's included in that kit, uh, but we're going to go ahead and start working on putting it on the bike and see how it goes. Stay tuned. Okay, so just a quick little rundown of how it's basically going to go. Uh, this, you pull the speedometer out, kind of sandwich this in there. The tachometer gets sandwiched in this part here. Got to remove these four bolts to access the bottom of the speedometer. Should be a couple uh, nuts underneath. Then this will pull out. Um, you're going to have to. We're going to have to run a cable from here under the tank into the area underneath the seat where we could plug it into the diagnostic port um, same thing that you plug in like your pv3 and that's pretty much it sounds fairly simple uh let's get going Okay, so you can see the diagnostic port here. All right, so you gotta squeeze this in, pull the cap out. Okay, after removing the seat, I think it's going to be best to remove the gas tank first before messing with the cluster and all that, just so you have more room to, to mess around in there. Uh, in my video where we replaced the spark plugs, I kind of go over a more thorough way of removing the tank, uh, but you got these two evap lines here. You can just unplug those real easy. Uh, then underneath you've got one fuel connection and one electrical connection that you need to disconnect. Stuff a towel in there, uh, but I'm kind of going to go through it quickly here and not really give you any close-ups or anything like that. One thing I didn't mention in the previous video, so on the frame there's like two round pucks right here and the gas tank kind of has these C-shaped things that hold on to that. So that's kind of what you're wiggling out here. Voila, the beautiful torque box. Okay, so next we're going to undo these four bolts so that we can get to the bottom of the speedometer. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is just put a little tape on here and on here so I can mark it and get it the exact same angle I had it before and not really have to worry about messing with that. T6s, I believe. Just take your time. I have heard of people stripping these. Okay, so before we actually get this completely off, I think I'm going to want to assemble the tachometer onto the rest of the gauge mount. Uh, so let's do that before we continue here. All right, so it took me f about four days to get from the bike to this location. And the reason it's taken me so long is since this came with zero instructions, 
We've got this bracket here, this U-shaped bracket that appears that it fits here, right? Or something to that pack matter. And uh, then we've got this weird bracket with a couple screws. And I could not figure out for the life of me what either of them was needed for. Uh, so, uh, one email, three calls later to Indian Motorcycles. I have finally got in touch with somebody who got me with the parts department and they were able to send me over the instruction booklet and I let them know it's missing from the website. Hopefully they get it taken care of. Uh, but yes, confirmed. This, not needed at all. Uh, I think that's just a generic bracket that comes from the manufacturer of the gauge. It's not in the instructions anywhere. This actually goes underneath the speedometer uh, to basically lift it up the same thickness as the new uh, tachometer ring that you're going to sit under there. So we are good to go and we can now continue. The instructions do still try to tell you that you must mount this on the left, but I'm going to ignore that and we're going to mount it on the right. So there's a little notch right here and on the bottom of the tachometer there's a little tap and that just sits inside that notch like so, so it will not spin. Not super effective necessarily. Uh, then you've got the bucket that goes on top like so. And then these uh, two little nuts here. Now it says these are supposed to be tightened down to like eight inch pounds. All right, so the whole thing does not spin. It'll be mounted to the right. And now we can go back to the motorcycle and continue taking off the speedometer. And make sure and hold your handlebars at the same time because as soon as you start loosening this, they're going to want to spin and rotate and slide out. As such. Stay. Stay. All right, so I'm not sure you can see it, but there's a big harness inside here. We're going to need to undo that. The instructions do not give you any hints on how to pull this out. All right, I don't think that's actually a tab or button. I think you're supposed to pull it out with that. Let's find out with some needle nose. Boom. Okay. The USB port makes it a little bit difficult. Okay, so on the back there are two screws that hold the speedometer into this whole bucket. Uh, it looks like a T20 star shaped bit. This is where the spacer and the two black screws that come with the kit will be installed. With those two removed, should be able to take out the speedometer. Should be able to. Gets in there pretty tight. Okay. 
Okay. But this seal around here seems to be pretty tight. All right. So I used a piece of wood to get leverage on it. And here we go. At this point, you can figure out, you can take this bezel off if you have a chrome one and you want the black one or whatever, but not needed at this point for me. So, same tab down here that we're going to insert into the slot in the ring. Voila. But now inside the bucket, we need to install this bracket. But it's kind of a pain in the ass because you can't put the screws in until you get the gauge on. So you've got to hold it on from underneath, put the gauge back in, The new screws are the same T20 style. All right, so now I gotta get the screw holes lined up. I'm not gonna lie, this is very awkward. I don't think it would even be any easier with two hands. Or with two people, rather. You mother fuck. But this would definitely be easier. If you didn't have the USB port. Okay, so that's a bit easier. Putting the speedometer in first and then sliding that bracket all up in there. Once you know you've gotten everything aligned correctly. Much easier. Just want to make sure the seal seems seated all the way around. Looks good. Now we can plug this back in.
I'm going to run the cable up from underneath. You definitely want it to come over the top. I think I may need to actually remove the nacelle to get in there, but I'm not certain yet. I think we can fish it out. If you don't have a fishing device, AKA a metal coat hanger, you better get one. All right, so now we can route it underneath the handlebars so that it doesn't get pinched off when you're turning. I think I want it under the brakes. Now I want to loosely get that back connected, but we don't want to tighten it down. You will tighten these to 22 foot-pounds once it's time. But I'm just kind of doing a light finger tight cross pattern right now. Let's go ahead and plug this puppy in. The clip is up. This has a nice watertight connection so it's strong holds in there real tight still plenty of room to access the USB and even hides it a little bit so that's cool now let's route the wiring So they basically, these tape points are where they want you to zip tie them in certain locations and just kind of follow the stock wiring. I kind of want to run that underneath all this nonsense. You've got four zip ties. So I ran it through here, up underneath, over there, right to the plug. Let's get the tank back on. Tank. 
all of my lines and tape are lined up. Okay, so full walk to the right. Night, nothing even close. Cool. Now 22 foot pounds. Okay, let's see if we can get it started up. Don't be a